So premise number one, suffering is bad. No! Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, you notified me about Humane Hancock and his God Complex. Today we're gonna have a closer look at his video titled The Vegan Blind Spot. Let's go. I want to begin this video by just explaining what motivated me to go vegan. Please I basically so. became aware of a large amount of suffering and I realized there was something I could do to reduce that suffering. So now, as you know, I spend most of my time trying to make other people aware of the suffering so they can gain the motivation to make the same changes that I did. <laughs> okay, wait a second. So first and foremost, you found out about some sort of suffering that you then in your mind equated to bad. Where your morality or ethics come from, we do not know. You decided that this suffering equals bad. Then you make the decision to go vegan. Good for you. I can relate to that because I was a vegan for four years. However, if you look into it, we talked about this numerous times on this channel, you will realize that the vegans kill more animals, destroy the habitat, and on top of that, destroy human health. And now you want to take your ideology and spread it to the masses. You want to brainwash more people into your religion. Let's proceed. So I'm going to take the general argument I'm making for veganism and put it into formal logic. Okay. And you could go through this with me and ask yourself whether you agree with these premises. Uh, mm -hmm. So number one, suffering is bad. <laughs> no, I do not agree. Right then, right there, we already have two different perspectives on this subject. Why is suffering bad? If you look into Buddhism, for example, you will see the phrase life is suffering. So clearly there are different ideologies and belief system to this. And this is what it is. It is just a belief system. You believe suffering is bad. I do not. Let's proceed. Number two, we should try to reduce suffering if we can. No, I do not agree at all. Yet again, why is suffering bad? Why should we reduce it? You don't list a reason for why. Suffering? Bad! I saw it on Disney, right? And therefore, it must be bad. What is the reasoning behind it? What does it mean to suffer? Can suffering be transmuted into something positive, perceived positive? Of course it can. If you take the example of bodybuilding, for example. You go to the gym, you bust your ass, you go through suffering in order to achieve something right? And that idea can be multiplied and exaggerated. If you look into the mechanics of bodybuilding, yes, I'm a meathead, then you will see that that suffering in the gym equates to a sacrifice. You're sacrificing your time, you're sacrificing your comfort zone in order to gain something, in this case muscle. But the idea of sacrifice is as old as humanity. You can see animal sacrifice, you can see child sacrifice in order to gain something. The name of this game is sacrifice, the name of this game is suffering. And therefore for you to say suffering is bad is simply ignorant. Number three, it's obvious that farmed animals are suffering. <laughs> if you what? Why? Have you ever seen farms? Have you ever visited those animals? Why would they suffer? They have amazing lives. If you see grass-fed cattle, for example, they're in a safe zone. They can graze all day. They're basically in a candy store. That is heaven. They have an absolutely amazing life. If they would be in nature, they would get eaten from the asshole upwards. How do farm animals really suffer? I agree with these premises, as I'm sure I most don't. of you will. I'm sure, yeah, but I don't. Then a logical conclusion would be we should try to reduce. Okay, wait a second. Just because you say it's logical doesn't mean it is, right? Out of your religious belief system, this makes sense. And everybody that will disagree with your belief system doesn't make sense. Don't you see how religious this is? It's the suffering of farmed animals. So I talk about suffering quite a lot. Uh, in fact, yes. my friends and my girlfriend often tell me that I talk about suffering far too much. 
It's quite a miracle that you have a girlfriend, first and foremost. But secondly, I'm not surprised. Of course, you're talking about suffering because you yourself suffer on a vegan diet. It is nothing but projection. And it is the obsession with violence, with suffering. It is normal for vegans because they do not follow their natural instincts. And I often think it's quite difficult to comprehend just how bad suffering can be for an individual. For example, I have been to several animal vigils before, animal saves. If you're unfamiliar with what these are, um, essentially activists stand outside of a slaughterhouse, mm -hmm. stop the trucks on the way in, and bear witness to the animals before they are killed. Exactly. So you basically disrupt the way from the farm to the slaughterhouse. Bearing witness. You're bearing suffering. You want to see it. You want to see the blood and the gore because you do not eat meat. This is what you're doing. In reality, you're distressing those animals. If suffering is so bad, why do you distress them? Just let the trucks pass. Get it done. Now, there have been several times when I've seen the animals in the trucks. They've gone past, closed the doors. I can no longer see them. And I turn around to my friend or whoever's there and just start so chit-chatting as, as normal, as if there isn't a mm. serious issue going on, as if behind those closed doors... It's called food. There is no serious issue. Or there isn't an immense amount of suffering going on. My ability to, to do... How is there an immense amount of suffering going on? I truly don't understand what you're saying. How is a bolt gun to the head immense suffering? I really do not understand you. That. It, it makes me think that I'm not really fully comprehending how bad the situation is, how much this individual is suffering. Yeah, this mental illness, yet again, you see it in vegans specifically. They want to feel the suffering of the animal. They're branding themselves. They're cutting themselves. They're absolutely ill. Just a few meters away from me. So maybe we could just take a second to think about how we feel when we suffer intensely. Why? It can be the only thing you can think about at times. When we're experiencing suffering at its worst, it seems like it's completely taking up our, all of our awareness, all of our conscious experience. When we are suffering, at that moment, it can feel like the most important thing in the universe. Okay, cut you off right there. Don't you see that this attitude leads to a weak society? This leads to safe zones. Oh, I don't want to feel that suffering. Don't call me fat. Listen, I was a chubby kid. People called me chubby. People called me fat. That motivated me to go on a diet, to get into the gym, to bust my ass. With that, I acquired discipline and strength of character throughout my life. That suffering was the most valuable learning lesson. I'm gonna give you another example. I was severely sick for over a year. Viral infections and whatnot. I was bedridden. I was partially paralyzed. That suffering was the greatest learning lesson of my life. Again, suffering is not bad. What you create are safe spaces. Weak little soy boys like yourself with a soy boy on your t-shirt. If you go against suffering, you go against the rules of life. And with that, you create weak, pathetic people like yourself. Disgusting man. So now let's think about an individual animal. Let's say a six-month-old pig going into a gas chamber. So this animal is feeling sick. Most pigs don't go to gas chambers. From the journey to the slaughterhouse. They're feeling confused. They can smell blood, so they're scared. And they're- How do you know that? About to experience an intense amount of pain. How? With a bolt gun to their head. How is that intense amount of pain? Lights are out in a second. For several seconds, they will scream in agony and thrash about in that gas chamber. Uh, if we really, really think about what this experience is like, we care a lot. And we desperately want no, to see it end. We want to intervene and stop this from happening. Okay, so now I want... Where is this going? I want to give you a thought experiment. And I totally understand <laughs> how strange this hypothetical will sound to you at first. Everything that you said sounds very strange to me. But please bear with me because I think you'll find it really interesting oh. in the end. Okay. So let's imagine for a second that we had a world where rather than a man-made slaughterhouse, mm. we had a slaughterhouse appearing naturally, organically. What? It grew out of the ground like a mushroom <laughs> in a forest. 
<laughs> and rather than a pig in the slaughterhouse, uh -huh. there was a deer. Uh -huh. And this deer is going through exactly the same experiences that the pig went through. So the deer is feeling nauseous. Mm. The deer is scared and confused. Mm -hmm. And the deer is about to be thrashing around in that gas chamber, screaming, begging for mercy, and just hoping it will end. Okay. My question for you is this. Would you still care about the suffering of this animal? Uh, Do you still... I didn't care in both cases. Want this suffering to stop? No. Do you want to stop this from happening? No. For me... <laughs> How manipulative. He's talking to little children and girls. And soy boys, of course. The answer is yes. Of course it is. I absolutely care about this individual. Mm -hmm. And I really want their suffering to end. Don't want this to happen. To the animal, it makes no difference whether or not the slaughterhouse was produced by man or uh, produced naturally. And here we go, the vegan god complex, right? Now nature is evil as well. We have to change it. The example of the natural slaughterhouse, I assume, will be shown as the natural world itself, where animals eat animals. Am I right? So now in this example with the natural slaughterhouse, which is absolutely ridiculous, vegans always have to come up with multiverses, different dimensions, human consciousness in a pig body and whatnot. It is absolutely ridiculous. They always come up with outlandish examples. Anyhow, to follow your logic, an organic slaughterhouse is better than nature itself because in the slaughterhouse they will experience less suffering. It makes no difference to their experience, their awareness of what's happening to them. Okay, so now what I'm going to do okay. is I'm going to tweak this hypothetical a little bit and ask you the same <laughs> question. Even more. <laughs> so now let's imagine that in this hypothetical world, mm. the slaughterhouse is no longer there. Mm -hmm. The naturally occurring slaughterhouse is gone. Okay. We are just left with a deer suffering. They're in pain. They're screaming. They're confused. What's they miss their families. How? See how vegans have to drag you down the rabbit hole, right? First and foremost, the organic slaughterhouse didn't make sense. But now out of a sudden there is a deer just suffering out of nowhere. Great philosophical excursion. Would you still care about this deer? Would oh. you still want... This deer, the deer doesn't exist. The interesting thing is, this last scenario is an accurate depiction of reality. Mm -hmm. We've got oh. animals in the wild, and they're suffering, and the suffering is occurring naturally. We idolize nature, and for 99.9%... Who idolizes nature? ...of wild animals, their suffering is completely hidden from us. Out of sight, out of mind. And likewise, 99.9% .9 of farmed animals, their suffering is completely hidden from us as well. The reality is mm -hmm. that there is an immense amount of suffering in the- Yes, life is suffering, you realize that. Now what? Wild. And if we saw their suffering, we would care deeply about it. Now- No, you would. I want to go back to the formal argument Where I made earlier. Going? And again, you just come with me on this journey and ask yourself the same journey. questions. So premise number one, suffering is bad. No! Premise number two, we should try to reduce suffering if we can. No! Premise number three, it is obvious that wild animals are suffering. When? If you agree with these premises, then a logical conclusion would be that we should try to reduce <laughs> logical. wild animal suffering. If we care about the suffering of the uh. individual, then surely we should care about all individuals. What you Not just do? the ones in farms and slaughterhouses, but also the ones suffering in nature. So we've talked about how bad... So let me cut you off right there. That is a transhumanist belief. There is this guy, David Pierce, who is a transhumanist, good friends with Bostrom and alike. He wants to create a reality where nothing is suffering. Very similar to your vegan belief system here. And of course, the guy is a vegan himself. His idea is to convert all the carnivores into herbivores, right? By implanting them with chips and changing their biology, their DNA. That is a fantastic way to wreck the whole environment. And this is a beautiful display of your ignorance, arrogance and God complex, where you believe that you understood this reality. You understand how everything works. And now you're going to impose your will on the natural world because suffering is bad. You're going to decide what is good and what is bad. You're going to play God. Disgusting. Suffering can be for the individual. 
But how big a problem is this? How many wild animals are there? It is estimated that the total number of wild land vertebrates is between 10 to the power of 11 and 10 to the power of 14. This is trillions of animals, yes. quite possibly hundreds of trillions. And guys, this isn't even including fish. The guys. total number of marine vertebrates is estimated to be at least 10 to the power of 13. Again, yes. we are talking about trillions. It's called the cycle of life. Life and death. Vegans do not understand this. This is not a Disney movie, man. You have to wake up. You're gonna die one day. It is normal. This is the name of the game. And trillions of wild animals being alive at any given time. To put this number into wow. perspective, the total number of livestock animals on Earth at any given time is around 10 billion. So the number of wild animals in existence right now is completely unfathomable. In order to understand what life is exactly. like for wild animals, which is actually quite cool because with that you can see that your vegan logic doesn't make any sense whatsoever. We want to reduce suffering, the humans are so so bad. In reality, we humans kill less animals than anything in the wild. It's useful to consider population dynamics. <clears throat> so the population of a species generally remains stable. This means that for every one animal that reaches sexual maturity, they will have an average of one offspring that also reaches sexual maturity. Mm -hmm. Now let's briefly consider reproductive. That is a healthy environment. Strategies. So some animals have a very small number of children. Good examples include humans and other apes. So if you think about two adult humans, they will average two children who receive a lot of attention and get a lot of resources. Uh -huh. Other animals who have less dependent babies have lots of offspring. We're yes. talking hundreds or thousands of babies. And all animals exist somewhere on the spectrum. Examples of animals who have lots of offspring include turtles and species of fish as well. Now, regardless of the reproductive strategy used, the population dynamics remain the same in that each adult individual averages one baby, making it to sexual maturity. And You're the most me. prevalent reproductive strategy by far is the one in which the animals have lots of offspring. So what is happening in nature? Well, let's say we've got three points in time. We'll call them point one, point two, mm. and point three. So at point one... How can anybody take this serious, really? We have two individual adult animals. At point two, we have lots of animals. They've yeah. had lots of babies. At point three, we know because population dynamics remain stable, there are two individual animals remaining. What is happening between point two? Oh, it's called natural selection if you believe in evolution. And of course, veganism is based on Darwinism, so therefore you truly must believe in it. You must believe in the survival of the fittest. So what is the problem here? Where do your ethics originate from? You didn't make the case. Where does moral come from? Where do ethics come from? Is there universal ethics? Yes or no? Two and point My three. God. The vast majority of animals are dying before they reach sexual maturity. Of course. It is a sad reality. It is a reality. For almost all Not animals, they are born and then die as babies. We are shown yes. biased nature documentaries that paint this picture of beauty and wonder. No. In reality, babies are born en masse in nature and then die a gruesome death shortly after. Now I totally follow nature is metal on Instagram. There you will see the true face of nature. First and foremost, yes, nature is beautiful. Yes, it is magical. It is majestic. All of it. It is beautiful. It is destructive. It is both. Nature gives life and nature takes life. It is beautiful. This is this reality. Welcome to planet Earth. I understand the idea of potentially intervening with nature is probably going to be a controversial topic. Um, which is why I wanted to make this section addressing some questions you may have. And these are questions that <laughs> I too will have. You may have. Now let me explain it to you, the enlightened one. Thank you. Thought of when first considering the topic. The mm. first question may be, is it really that bad? Surely you... No, that's not the first question. The question is, is it bad? 
Is it good? And who are you to judge it? Can't compare the suffering of wild. Why is the sky blue? I want it red. Animals with the suffering of farmed animals. Well, the vast majority of baby animals will die from being eaten alive. They'll die of starvation. They'll die of disease. The very small yes. number of animals who make it to sexual maturity will live a life of struggle, fighting for a limited number of resources with fear of being attacked by predators. And now you see how good farm animal have it. And will eventually die a gruesome death, either from starvation, from disease, or from being eaten alive. It yes. would not be an exaggeration to describe this situation as a living hell. But wait! No, I wouldn't agree. You would describe it as Earth. This is not heaven. This is not hell. This is our reality where good and evil exists and where we have to cope with it. We have to see it. We have to face it. We have to embrace it. You want to pussyfoot around like the rest of this weak generation. Absolutely disgusting, effeminate soy boys. We're not causing Cucks. all of the suffering to these wild animals. Huh? And surely we're only responsible for the suffering that we inflict. Well, imagine for a second that you're going on a walk and you see a baby bird fall out of a nest. This baby is very much vulnerable. She can't walk, she's blind, can't see, and will almost definitely die a gruesome death. So the first question is, did it fall out of the nest or did the mother toss it out of the nest for natural selection? Yet again, birds will do that. The strongest shall survive. The weak get shunned. This is what is happening. So therefore, if you walk by, you pick it up, put it back into the nest, that thing will get tossed out again. Either from starvation or from being eaten alive. Okay. Now, all you need to do to prevent this suffering from happening is take 10 seconds out of your day to pick that baby up and put her back in the nest with her mother. Oh, do you think you should do this? Oh, Disney, yes. In fact, would you think less of me if I walked past? Listen, man, I'm not a monster, right? Of course, if I would see a suffering dog, for example, I would help him out. In this scenario, though, if you touch the bird, the mother doesn't accept it any longer. So therefore, nobody can help that bird anyways. And on top of that, yet again, you do not understand why that suffering is there. You do not understand a bigger purpose. You do not understand the greater picture. You do not understand anything. You think picking up bird, putting back in nest, very good. Because I was too lazy to put the bird back. I know I would think less of myself. We have to remember that to the individual, it makes no difference whether or not you personally caused their suffering. It makes no difference to their experience. Obviously, every normal human being understands that suffering is suffering. But now, because you're talking to vegans, you have to tell them that suffering is bad, no matter if bad, bad human did it. If we have influence over the life of an individual, we would rather they didn't suffer. When our pets get sick, we take them to the vet. As our ability to because we own them to influence the lives of others grows larger, so too does our responsibility. If we should try to reduce the suffering of a dog who lives in our house, surely if there's a dog just your outside dog. your door, outside, with a broken leg, crying in pain, surely we should help them too. And as a society, we could be doing so much more for the suffering of wild animals than we currently are. Where is this going? Yet again, if you rewind a little bit, you talk about, hey, there are two animals, then there are 100 animals, and then there are two again. Exactly, right? That is population control, a natural mechanism. If you stop that, you will overpopulate the planet. But wait a second, we already overpopulated by bad, bad humans. So many bad humans are everywhere. But what about the animals, right? What about their carbon footprint? How about we have billions and trillions more animals? How is that sustainable? What are you saying? And on top of that, nobody eats them, right? <laughs> but suffering in the wild oh, is natural. God. And therefore we should just accept it. Oh. Well, just because something's well, natural, well, well. that doesn't make it good or desirable. Mm. Malaria is natural. Mm. And we wouldn't accept abstaining from prevention interventions mm. because it occurs naturally. Mm. But this is absurd. We can't just plead. Why do you talk like that? It's nature. Well, would we accept this statement if a natural disaster was about to cause a large amount of suffering and death 
to a large group of people. Oh my God, you are equating fighting for your own survival, which is an intrinsic biological mechanism to changing the blueprint of Earth. Do you understand this? I think it's safe to say that we try to prevent the cruel reality of nature when the victims are human. You may also wonder, but surely there are bigger issues to worry about. No, I don't wonder. Bigger problems. I just wonder why I wasted half an hour of my life listening to you. Well, we need to consider what makes a pressing problem. I think it's fair to say that the size of the problem is important. And if we look at the size of this issue, there's a huge number of animals suffering. Another important point is... Yes, but it's not an issue. ...the improvability of the problem. And I think it's fair to say that if you uh. want to make a positive, significant difference in the world, you should pay your attention to areas that have been underfunded, under-resourced. This is one of the reasons that vegan activism appeals to me so much, is that there's not <laughs> enough people working in this area to reduce this. Exactly. You can feel like a special little snowflake. This is what you want. I understand the vegan niche very well. I've been there for four years. Everybody wants to capitalize. Everybody is super narcissistic, self-obsessed with their self-image, with their false persona on the internet. Humane Hancock. What an arrogance, creating a false idol, worshiping himself, and he wants you to worship him as well. Suffering and exploitation. Well, when it comes to wild animal suffering, there's barely anyone working in this area. Hmm. It's got a huge scope for improvement. More but jobs what for about you. rewilding and introducing natural predators to control populations? Isn't this something that vegans promote as an alternative to hunting? I think it would be useful to see how this sounds in a human context. So let's imagine <laughs> a tribe of indigenous people and their population is going out of control. And this is creating huge issues for biodiversity. Mm. It's destroying habitats and it's gonna cause problems for other humans down the line. How mm -hmm. would we feel about introducing an animal that is going to hunt them down and eat them alive? Pretty good. If there would truly be an issue with those people, we as a society would feel pretty good about getting rid of them. How do I know this? Because we already do it with war. This is what people do. If there is a problem, they will fight each other off. This is not some new concept. We would think this sounds utterly barbaric. If introducing oh. a predator oh. to control the population of humans barbaric. seems utterly evil, why would we think it's an acceptable thing oh. to do to non-human animals? So you're saying- I'm getting tired of this because yet again, this is the natural cycle. This is the natural food cycle. This is what has to happen in order for this planet not to explode. Everything has its balance. You are not God. You cannot intervene with it. Saying you're going to kill all the lions. Well, look, I'm not saying <laughs> we should kill anyone. Oh. And up to this point, I haven't been talking about specific interventions. Mm. But perhaps we could look at things like contraception as a way to reduce the number of predators in the wild. But guys, what? the truth is, I don't have the solution. <laughs> All I know is that this is a problem. And the more I look... You're mentally ill, man. You're absolutely insane. There is no problem. You are judging certain things as bad. Again, this is a pattern that we have in this society. Fat shaming bad bullying bad animals death bad it is idiotic it is moronic it is childish georges st pierre ufc champion got bullied as a kid now he is the ufc champion and guess what he's doing now now he is campaigning against bullying that is so ridiculous if you really look into it he became the man that he is through bullying. That is again a natural system. Kids try to point out your weakness. If nobody critiques you, if you're always in your safe zone, if there is nobody here, for example, that is critiquing your shit video, then you will think that what you are doing is right because you're in your safe zone and all the vegans are massaging your balls and you're feeling great, right? I'm doing the right thing. No, weakness has to be pointed out. Weakness has to be eliminated. This is the only way forward. Into this, the worse it gets. Um. I don't have the solution. <laughs> and that's exactly why we need to raise awareness about this issue. Dude, you need to raise awareness of your malnutrition. You need a steak right now. We need to get greater minds than mine thinking about <laughs> this. 
That shouldn't be too hard. And we need to actually acknowledge it as a problem. So that maybe why do we need to be one day we can find a solution? You may be concerned. Why would we concerned with biodiversity? A loss of biodiversity can cause problems for humans, big problems. And at the level of the species, genetic variation is important too. Hmm. It can allow a species to handle changing environments. Mm -hmm. And by that I mean genetic variation in the species means that some individuals will be better suited to survive and reproduce. Mm -hmm. And natural and sexual selection will favor these individuals. Yes. However, as vegans, we value the suffering of the individual who cares what you value? Who cares about your religion? Nobody. You described it yourself. It is a natural process that if disrupted will lead to catastrophe. But now we have to listen to your ass here telling us, no, let's just disrupt it. Let's see what happens because we as vegans, we value it so much. Also what the hell, man? than the success of the species. Species is an abstract concept. As a concept, the species isn't sentient. Think about the fact that on a species level, it could be argued that chickens have benefited hugely from factory farming. They did. There are more of them in the world. At the gene level, this yes. could be seen as a success. Absolutely. However, at the individual level, the chicken isn't doing very well at all. And that's what's more important to us. So we mm -hmm. need to focus on... Exactly. Great point there. This is what is more important to you. You guys don't understand about collective. You guys don't understand about the greater picture. What you are obsessed with is the individual, right? You, your individual perception. This is what you're obsessed with. Your self-image, your persona that you're displaying online. This is what you are obsessed with. And this is why you project your own narcissism, your own egotism, and you project it onto the animals. They must feel the exact same way. Absolute moral. The individual, not the Bleh. species. But we'll only make things worse. Humans always make things worse. Yes, looking at you, humans make everything worse. Actually, there have been a number of programs that have helped wild animals before. We have rescued <sighs> wild animals from natural disasters. In Europe, we vaccinated foxes against rabies. And programs mm -hmm. have successfully used... Why did we do that? Because we don't want to get rabies. It's contraception rather than hunting as a means of population control. And yes, of course, of course there are risks in intervening. Oh. But we have to look at the risks of both options. And the other option is to leave things alone. Leave the situation as it yes. currently is. Well, that would be a catastrophe beyond our <laughs> wildest nightmares. Because... <laughs> Okay, wait a second. So that would be a catastrophe, right? If you look at the planet without humans, it has been a catastrophe for billions of years. Again, I am appealing to your sense of evolution and history. So in that case, billions of years, no humans, everything fine. But now, human history, zack, veganism, no, nothing is fine. Reset the whole thing, right? God complex. It is not even possible for me to do justice to how bad the current situation is for wild animals. It is awful. So the risks- Why do you keep on saying that? You do not know that. Of not intervening are far greater than the risks of- Look how he wants to appeal to your emotion. That's all they try to do. Oh, it's so bad. It's so bad. It's so much suffering, isn't it? Isn't it, guys? Of intervening. So what can we do as individuals about this issue? Well, we can raise awareness about wild animal suffering. We can talk about it in social and political conversations. <laughs> and we can get intellectual circles to take this oh, issue seriously. I hate this generation. So that researchers have this topic on their agenda. Influential people are directed by public discourse. So let's acknowledge this as the problem that it is now. It's not a problem. So when we do have the technology to make a significant difference to the lives of wild animals, the idea isn't just laughed at. Another thing we can do is focus on veganism. I guess it's a fair assumption to make that in a world where we don't even give animals their basic fundamental rights. It's actually a great example with veganism. If you look at veganism, as I said in the beginning, you are creating more habitat destruction, more environmental damage, and you're killing more animals by trying to do something good, eliminating suffering. When you try to change the fabric of this reality, you mess it up. And this is already seen with veganism. 
of course the natural implication of your body not getting nutrition and becoming a soy boy like yourself. So now you already see veganism is failing and instead of going into regenerative agriculture, we're gonna destroy the whole planet, right? We're gonna castrate the lions, infuse them with microchip, play God. This is the reality that you want to create, don't you see this? Not to be stabbed for burgers, in a world where we inflict Stabbed. this suffering needlessly, of course, this needlessly. society isn't going to work. Because I am God, I know that it is needlessly. Work hard towards reducing wild animal suffering. So let's, this arrogance. let's try and get a more compassionate world for animals in general. <laughs> let's promote veganism as much as we can. And no. guys, this isn't like when we learned about farmed animal suffering and we were obligated to make this big lifestyle change. <laughs> for this issue, you just need to acknowledge that all animals matter. Mm. To acknowledge that their suffering is important. Yes. And it doesn't matter whether the animal is in our house, mm -hmm. in a farm, mm -hmm. or in a jungle. Yes. Their suffering matters. Logical, guys. It matters to them. Mm. And it should matter to us. Exactly. So thank you for watching this video and considering worries, this viewpoint. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I think and I did. I think I'm getting pretty close to getting 10,000 YouTube subscribers. Wow. That is pretty cool. Yes. Because, you know, for the first year of doing this, I had a very, very small group of people, less than mm. a thousand. More um, brainwashed people and I guess it's kind you. of starting to grow a bit it's more. Great. Now, so that's really exciting. Mm. Thank you so much for all of the encouragement and support. Thank you so much for my Patreon team. Um, if you want to join my team, I will leave Okay, well, let's cut it off right here. So, this is Humane Hancock's standpoint. I think we said enough during that video. Just to sum it up yet again, guys, this is the God delusion. Absolute egocentrical, narcissistic behavior of people that believe they have the truth. Based on what? Where do morals come from? Where do morals originate from? Do you believe in God? Yes or no? Do you believe in Darwinism? If you believe in Darwinism, why all of a sudden you do not believe in natural selection? The logical consistency they are speaking of is lacking. There is no logical consistency. Nothing makes sense under real scrutiny. If you look into it, you will see that it's just a pipe dream. Based on emotions, based on Disney movies, it doesn't add up. Those people don't hold the truth. They're holding a collective delusion that they don't want to be infiltrated by reality. They want to protect themselves from reality, stay in their little safe bubbles where nobody can critique them and perpetuate their idiotic ideas. Of course, this is industry funded. And of course, you have the big transhumanists behind this that want to push it onto us. They want to get rid of humans. This is basically it. Maximum population control within the human realm and within the natural world. Control every aspect of this reality. Control every aspect of this creation and keep you in delusion. This is veganism in a nutshell. All right, guys, but this is it for today. If you liked the video, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so. And guys, if you want to support the channel, all the links are in the description box below. If you want raw grass-fed liver, but you cannot stand the taste, Grassland Nutrition has the solution. Grassland Nutrition takes grass-fed organic beef liver raw and freeze-dries it for you. It is a convenient, fantastic way to get the nutrition of liver without the taste. So we have Amazon links for you. You can head over there, buy whatever you might want to buy, and it doesn't cost you anything extra. We get a small share. That is a fantastic way to support Bobby's perspective. If you want grass-fed beef delivered to your doorstep, butcher boxes for you. And we have CBD links as well. On top of that, guys, consider supporting Bobby's perspective through Subscribestar or Patreon. We have a VIP community there where we have Skype group calls every single week where we can discuss any topic, no matter if it is health, lifestyle or nutrition related. On top of that, by joining, you straight away receive your comprehensive nutrition guide. It is an ebook that teaches you the basics of nutrition, but goes beyond as well and is catering to your personal goals, no matter if you're keto, primal, paleo or even raw. All right, but this is it for today. Thank you very much, guys. And as always, much love and peace.